Okay, so let's take a look at 38 in your Algebra 1 packet. Samantha and Maria purchased flowers. Samantha purchased five roses for X dollars each and four daisies for Y dollars each. So remember that. Look at your equations. The X stands for the dollars for each rose and the Y stands for the dollars for each daisy. She spent a $32 total on her flowers. Maria purchased one rose for X dollars and six daisies for Y dollars each, spending $22. The system here is given. Which statement is true? So let's read over these. A rose costs one more than a daisy. Well, we would have to solve for the cost to find out if that's true. Samantha spent $4 on each daisy. Well, let's see. The daisies cost Y dollars each, so we'd have to solve to find that. Samantha spent more on daisies than she did on roses, where Samantha spent over four times as much on daisies as she did on roses. So we need to solve this system. Remember that X is the cost per rose and Y is the cost per daisy. You can solve the system by substitution or by elimination, whichever you prefer. Since there's already a variable that's almost isolated, it has a leading coefficient of 1, I'm going to solve it through substitution. To get X by itself, I would subtract 6Y from both sides. So I know X is equal to 22 minus 6Y. Since I know what x is equal to, I'm going to take what x is and replace that in the first equation, replace that in the other equation. So I'm going to take that 5x plus 4y equals 32, but instead of writing x, I'm going to write 22 minus 6y. So here's what I have. 5 times, it's 5 times x, well x is this whole thing, so you need parentheses. And then plus the 4y equals 32. Notice everything else is just from that equation. I just replaced x with what x is equal to, which is 22 minus 6y. Now I can solve. I can start by distributing the 5. 5 times 22 is 110. 5 times the minus 6y is minus 30y plus 4y equals 32. Keep going. Combine the like terms that you have here. I have 110 minus 26y because it's a negative 30 and a positive 4 equals 32. Then to get y by itself I need to subtract 110 from both sides and I have negative 26y Oops. equals negative 78. Now I can divide by negative 26 to get y by itself. Remember this is just y, so y equals 3. And remember, go back to what y is. Four daisies for y dollars each. So y is $3 per daisy. Now that I know what y is, though, I can solve for x. Go back to one of your original equations. It doesn't matter which one. I'm going to take the second one. x plus 6y equals 22. Put in 3 for y. Since we know y is 3 now, we can do 6 times 3 and solve for x. So I have x plus 18 equals 22. Solve for x. Isolate it. Get it by itself. x equals 4. And remember, what, is, what does x stand for? Well, they bought so many roses for x dollars each. So it's $4 per rose. So your solution is 3 comma 4, or $4 per rose, $3 per daisies. Now let's see which one of these statements is true. A rose costs one more than a daisy. Well, that is true. Four is one more than three, so this will work. But let's see if any of the other ones work. Samantha spent four dollars on each daisy. No, three dollars on each daisy. It's four dollars on each rose. Samantha spent more on daisies than she did on roses. Well, Samantha is this first equation. Her roses cost five times four, which is twenty. Her daisies cost twelve, or four times three. Samantha actually spent more on roses, so that's not true. And Samantha spent over four times as much on daisies as she did on roses. Again, not true. So your correct answer is A. Number 39 then, write the compound inequality shown by the graph. Remember with compound inequalities, 
if the graph is showing both regions, a number can't be in here and also over here. So it must be an or and cannot be an and because I'm showing that both sets of numbers are solutions. If, it was, if the shading was in between, like down here, we'd be more inclined to think it was an and because a number can satisfy both. But since there's two separate shadings, it's going to be an or. So we can rule out A and B. Now let's write an inequality for each one. Now even looking at the circles, guys, this circle is filled in and this one is open. So what does that tell you about your signs? You're going to have one that is just a symbol and one that's going to be a symbol with a line underneath. Looking at your options that's left, you're probably already thinking it's C. But we don't want to just guess, we want to actually find it, so let's, let's do this. Write an inequality for just this half of the graph. Well, here I'm saying x is more than 3. It can't be 3, but it can be 4, 5, 6, it could be 8.29, it could be the square root of 10, or it could be, sorry, not the square root of 10, but like the square root of like 20, it could be anything that's more than 3, including decimals. What about this side then over here? Well, the shading is the numbers that are more negative, so x has to be less than, it can be equal to negative 5. Remember that negative 10 is actually smaller than negative 5. So your answer is what we guessed it was going to be. It is C. I recommend writing the inequality first and then looking at your options, but you can cancel out some options that you know are wrong. Again, knowing that it couldn't be an and, we could do that right away. And 40, let's go over this. Solve and graph the solutions of the compound inequality. Well, remember that when the compound, when, the, when you're given an inequality and it's rested in between, this is an and. So you can split it apart and solve two separate inequalities. Rewrite the center twice. We have 1 is less than 3x minus 2. We can solve that. And then we have 3x minus 2 is less than or equal to 10. So notice this is part of both inequalities. It goes with the 1 is less than. It also goes with the is less than or equal to 10. So you just write the center twice, and now you can solve each one. You could also solve it up here, but you'd have to do something to all three sides. So we're more used to seeing this. We can add 2 to both sides. We can actually do that on all, on both equations. And you get 3 is less than 3x. Then divide by 3 and you get 1 is less than x, or x is greater than 1. Remember, the Pac-Man byte is eating the larger one. Over here, we add 2 to both sides. We get 3x is less than or equal to 12. You can divide by 3, and you get x is less than or equal to 4. So which one of these graphs shows that? And remember, we said it's an and, so it's going to have to be both of these. Look at the signs, look at the circles, look at the symbols. We can see that our correct answer is B. Forty-one, to join the school's swim team, swimmers must be able to swim at least 500 yards without stopping. Let N represent the number of yards a swimmer can swim without stopping. Write an inequality to describe which values of N will result in a swimmer making the team. So to make the team, they must be able to swim at least 500 yards, and N is going to be the number of yards. What, is it? what does at least mean? Think about that symbol. If, if you went to Kennywood and it said you have to be at least four foot tall to ride a ride, or if you wanted to go into the movies and they said you have to have at least $8 to get in, what does at least mean? Well, it means that you could have more than that, and you could have that exact amount, but you can't have less than that. So the number of yards should be n is at least, it's greater than or equal to 500. Again, if you think about a real world situation, if you have to be at least 5 foot tall to get in, you have to be more than or equal to it. Now we can see which one of those match. A correct answer here is D.